So I wanted to do a quick video on measures of central tendency out of section 3.1 and look at both types of examples that you'll see in this section. So we want to take a look at a example where we have raw data and we want to find the mean, the median, and the mode. And then we're going to look at a grouped frequency distribution and look at finding the mean and the mode for that data set. So let's begin with the raw data example. I kept the data set very small so that we can work through it quickly. We have six data values and we'll begin by finding the mean. Remember that in order to find the mean, you simply want to add up your data values. I'm just writing our formula down real quick. So we want to sum our data values up. So we'll do that. We'll add in 110, 76, 29, 38, 105, and 31. And that gives us a total of 389. And we'll divide by n when n is the number of data values. So we have six data values. which gives me 64.8. We'll go ahead and do two decimal places, so 64.83 for the mean. For the median, we want to put our data values in order. From smallest to largest, and so we'll begin by doing that. So we have 29, we have 31, 38, 76, 105, and 110. And remember that your median is your middle value. So if we had a clear middle value because we had an odd number of data values, we would select that. But since we don't have a middle value, we'll actually go with the middle two and we'll average those values. So we'll say 38 plus 76, and we'll divide it by 2, and that will give us our median. So 38 and 76 give us 114. Divide it by 2, and we're going to end up with 57. And then our mode, remember the mode is the value that occurs most often, and since all of our values only occur once, we can say then that this data set does not have a mode, and so we simply say no mode for this data set. Okay, so that's an example for raw data, finding your three measures of central tendency. Let's go ahead and look at a grouped frequency distribution example. So on this one we have um, five classes, and we have the classes given and the frequencies given. And so when we look at our first class, we know that we have five values that fall between 150 and 158, but we don't actually know what those five values are. And so that presents a problem when I go to calculate my mean, because in my mean formula, remember that the first thing we have to do is sum the x's. And so if I know that there are five values between 150 and 158, but I don't know what those values are, then I'm going to have a hard time adding them up. So the best thing that we can do in this case is simply to estimate what those values are. And a good estimation of those values is to use the midpoint. And so I'm going to add a column to this example, and we're going to calculate the midpoint for each of these five classes. And so remember that in order to calculate the midpoint, you're going to take your two class limits, so like 150 and 158. You're going to add those together and divide by 2. So 150 and 158 gives me 308. And we'll divide that by 2, giving me a midpoint of 154.
And so we would continue to do that in each of the other four classes, getting those midpoints. And so our next one would be 163. Our next one would be 172. 181 and 190. So once we have our midpoints calculated, we then conclude that yes, we have five values in the first class between 150 and 158, and those five values are all going to be estimated to be 154. So these now become our x values, and we really no longer need the class limits. Okay, so now we want to add these x values up. Now keep in mind that as you add these x values, these x values are occurring more than once. So the 154 is actually occurring five times. The 163 is occurring 16 times. The 172 is occurring 20 times and so forth. So we can't simply add this x column up and be done because that would assume that the values only happened once. So essentially what we want to do is remind ourselves that the 154 actually occurs five times. And so when we start adding values up, we want to think about how can we easily add 154 plus 154 plus 154 plus 154 plus 154. And the easiest way to do that is by using multiplication. So I'm going to add a column here, x times the frequency and we're going to multiply. So I'm going to say 154 times 5, and that's going to give me 770, and that would be what I would get if I were adding up those five 154s. And then we'll do the same thing on the second line. So we'll say 163 times 16. That gives me 2608. The third one, 172 times 20 gives me 3440. 181 times 21 gives me 3801. And finally, 190 times 20 gives me 3800. Okay, so now these are the numbers that we want to add up, and that will give me the sum of my x values. So I'm going to sum this column, and that will go on the top of my formula for the mean. So 770 plus 2608 plus 3440 plus 3801 plus 3800. So this gives me a sum of 14,419, and that number goes here. The n value will be the sum of the frequency. That tells me how many values I have, so I'm going to add up 5 and 16 and 20 and 21 and 20, which is a total of 82 numbers. And so that number will go on the bottom. And so for our mean, we'll be dividing 14,419 by 82 and rounding to two decimal places. So we're looking at 175.84 for our mean. We do not do a median for a grouped frequency distribution. And so we skip then to the mode. Again, the mode is the class or the value that occurs most often. And so we can simply look at our frequencies and identify the class that has the highest frequency, which is this class that has a frequency of 21. And we can write that our mode is 177 to 185. It is also acceptable to give your answer in terms of the midpoint. So you could also have said that the mode was 181. So those are our two measures of central tendency for a grouped frequency distribution.